our service is now ready so we can start making use of this service in the component uh, let me make sure I have the error. So this is going to throw an error. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that I actually put some implementation for this function. And also you can make this function a lot more robust. Like you can put if statements and check for whatever you want to check. But in my case, I'm just going to throw, you know, this code right here. And then I'm going to show the status. But you can also access the message, like the developer message that we set up in the back end. It should be inside of this guy right here. But in this case, I'm just going to throw this string right here, which is just going to be a simple string. So let's go back. Uh, I'm going to close these first and then go back to the component. So I'm going to collapse this interface and service for now and go back into the app component. So this is the main component of our application. And I'm also going to go ahead and delete the spec file because I'm not going to use it Move the recycle bin. What I want to do is to clean this HTML file, delete. And inside of the uh, app component, we're going to start working on our application in here. So the first thing I want to have is a constructor. So I'm going to define a constructor so that I can do dependency injection because we need to bring in the service that we just created. And this is going to be the server service. So I'm going to call it server service and it's going to be of type server service. So server service. So in the constructor for this class, so this app component class, I'm going to collapse this formal room. So inside of this class, we have the server service. So that means we can use all the functions that we just defined in the server service and then uh, get the data that we need. So I'm going to come down here and I need to implement a lifecycle hook called ng on init. So I'm going to do ng on init and this is not going to take anything. It's going to also return void and open and close curly braces. And for this to work, we need to actually implement an interface, I believe. So implement on init. So because we're implementing this on init, then we're obligated to define this method right here. So what this means is that whenever this component is done initializing, it's going to call this ng on init, and that's going to fire any code that we put inside of this function. And that's exactly what we're looking for because we want the code to execute once this component is initialized. So remember, I said that we're going to capture the entire state of the application, and that's going to be a variable that I'm going to call app state, and it's going to be an observable. So I'm going to put the dollar sign at the end, and then I'm going to give it a type of observable, and that's going to be an observable of type app state. So we're going to call the app state interface that we define. Remember, this is a generic, so we need to pass it the type of data that we're going to have in the state. So the type of data is going to be the custom response. So I'm going to say custom response. So also from our interface, and that's going to be our type. So the entire application state is going to be inside of this observable or this variable and the type of it is an observable. And then we pass in the type for that observable, which is the entire application state. And the data that we're going to manage is the custom HTTP response. So remember the app state is still generic. So we have to pass the type of data we want in the application state. So for this state right there, and then we pass in the custom HTTP response, which is going to contain all the data of the application at any given moment. Hopefully this is connecting. So what I want to do when the application initialize, I want to set the state of the application. So I'm going to call the application state and then set it equal to the service. So server service. And then I want to call the servers because this is going to return a list of all the servers in the application. And then what I want to do is to pipe this. So I'm going to call the pipe operator. I want to map any response that I get. So I'm going to call the map. I'm going to say whenever you get a response from the server, right? I want to execute a callback function and I'm going to put open and close curly braces here because I want to have multiple lines. So if we have a response, we want to return an object, which is going to be of type application state, because remember, we're setting the application state here. So whatever we put inside of this object, it has to be of this type right here. OK, so let me scroll up a little bit. So what I want to do is to set the data state. So I'm going to say data state. So the data state is going to be the data state. So I'm going to say data state and then we want the loaded state. So that's going to be the loaded because at this point we know that we get a response from the server. So our data is loaded and then we need to set the app data. So we're going to say app data and this is going to be the response that we get. So we're going to say response and you can see this is not complaining because this is a valid object to return here because it matches the description of the type that we set up here. So the application state, which is an observable, we are already in an observable because the servers is an observable and then we're piping the response and map it to this object, which is also the same type of 
this object that we define up here. This is only going to happen whenever we get the response. So when the application is done initializing, then it calls this ng on in it. Then it's going to say, all right, I need to subscribe this observable. And this observable is going to make an HTTP request. So that means we're not going to have this data right away because we have to wait because it's an HTTP request, which means that we need to give this observable something to begin with. And we're going to use another operator called start with. You can see it coming up here. And then we can give it another object to return while we wait for the data to come back. So what I'm going to do is to just copy all this and then paste it in here. All right. So what I'm doing here is saying, OK, so we're going to subscribe to this observable, which is going to make an HTTP request that we as the developer, we know that this is going to take some time. So while this is going on, so while we're making the request to the back end, we're going to return this object to this observable. And at this point, our data is not loaded, so our data is loading. So we're going to select the loading state. And also remember, I made the data optional. So if you go back to the application state, the app data is optional. So that means we don't have to pass it because we know that at this point in the application, while we're waiting for the HTTP request to complete, we don't have any data yet. You could do something like this. You could say no, that would work as well, but I can just omit it altogether because it's optional. I don't have to pass it. So I'm just going to say, okay, at this point, my application state, the for the data state, it's loading. And then one last thing I need to do is to catch any errors that occurs in the application. And for this, I'm going to use the catch error again. So I'm going to do catch error, which is coming also from the operators. And this is going to take the error. So I'm going to say this is going to be the error. And we know that this is going to be a string. So if I go back real quick to the service, I'm just going to click here to go to the service. Remember, whenever we get an error, so for any of these functions, whenever we get an error, which is going to go to the catch error, it's going to call this function and pass the error to it, which is what we're catching down there. And all we're doing is we're throwing the error by just sending this string. OK, so that's a simple string. We could send an object. We could send something really complex. But in my case, I'm just sending this simple string. So this string is going to be the error that we're catching here, which is why I'm giving it the type of string, because I know for sure that it's going to be a string every single time. And then what I want to do is to just call the callback function. And what I want to do here is to return another observable. So I'm going to do return of, which is another operator from IHS that you can use to create an observable on the fly. And in here, I'm going to pass in another object. Remember, every object that we pass, it has to be of this type. So the type that we define up here, which is what this is expecting, because we set this equal to this entire thing. So whatever we put inside of this guy, it has to match this data type right here. So I can just copy the same object in here and then go down here and then paste it. But this time it's not going to be loaded. It's going to be the error state. So I'm going to select the error state because we get an error and then I can pass the error as well. So you can do something like this. So error is going to become error because remember, if we go back one more time into the app state, we call this property error. So another thing we can do since we name this error and this is also error as well, we can just pass in one of them because they have the same name. So JavaScript will be able to do the work and say like, okay, for the error, it's going to be this error right here. So we can just keep it that way. And you can see now everything looks good. We don't have any errors in the application because we're setting our state correctly. So we can subscribe to this observable. And at any given moment, it's either going to say, all right, we get some data or it's going to say the data is loaded or we're going to get an error. And the way we're going to subscribe to this observable is in the UI by using the async pipe. So that's going to make everything really easy for us. Whenever the application initialize, it's going to go through this and then it's going to say, all right, I don't have the response yet. So I'm just going to start with this so we can say, hey, application is in loading state. And then once we get some data, then it's going to return this state. Or if we get an error for some reason, then we know we're going to get this error state and then we're going to get an error message that we can show to the user. So this is a reactive approach instead of, you know, subscribing here and the component and things like that. So that's another way you can write your Angular code. And there is really a lot of benefits for writing your code this way.